My name is Ola Abdul Qawi. Uh, today we are talking about the evaporation. Evaporation process is the, one of the most unit operation process that used to remove the water from the liquid to get more concentrated one. Uh, evaporation process is different from drying process and distillation one. It's, uh, because in drying we get the residue is solid, but here there, our residue is liquid. In distillation, there is fraction for vapor, but here there is no any fraction for vapor. So, uh, as example for the evaporation process, uh, in dairy industry, the concentration for the milk considered as evaporation process. Uh, evap uh, the, in the evaporation process, the equipment used there is called evaporator. There are so many types of evaporators and there are so many classification for them. Uh, the classification can be based on the type of the process, continuous or batch. It can be based on the effect, like multiple effect evaporator, or it can be based on the uh, it can be based uh, on the circulation of the liquid over the heat transfer area. Uh, our evaporator in this experiment is climbing film evaporator, uh, which lies in among the group of uh, evaporator that classified based on the circulation of the liquid. Uh, this is the climbing film evaporator equipment. Okay. Let's see how the process is going on. First, uh, we have the feed tank where the feed come from and go directly for the evaporator. This is our uh, climbing film evaporator. The liquid will enter from the bottom and go upwards because of the existence of the bump. At this section, the lower section, the liquid will be heated up uh, until its boiling point and then it will start to rise up because the vapor will be produced. And then the liquid and the vapor will go upwards and uh, the vapor will continue to, the production of vapor will be continued and the product start to uh, make a film or start to form a film in the tube, in the inner side of the tube of the evaporator. Uh, and uh, this co-current flow between the liquid and the vapor is going up, uh, producing turbulence in the liquid flow. And this increases the velocity and the heat transfer rate of the mixture. Then. Uh, with this high velocity, the mixture will go to the top of the evaporator and then it will be discharged out into the separator and then it will be separated into two, the vapor and the concentrated liquid. The vapor will go to the condenser where it will be condensed and it can be recycled to the process again for energy efficiency and the product it can be taken out or it can be recycled again into the feed tank for more concentration. Uh, hello, good evening. I'm Shogun from group A29. I'm here to talk about the methodology of climbing film evaporator. And to start start up with I would like to introduce the equipment used in this experiment. Okay. First, feed tank. You can see a feed tank. And this is a evaporator. And out there you can see a cyclone. And this is a, uh, just underneath uh, the cyclone you can see a uh, concentrate receiver. And out there you can see a uh, condenser and also a uh, conden condenser and also Condensate receiver one and condensate receiver two. Okay. <coughs> now, how this climbing film evaporator works? It's a simple experiment whereby the KMNO4 from the feed tank will move to the evaporator. Uh, will move to the shell tube. Will move to the shell tube where the, uh, the, where the process of evaporation concentration and also condensation will take after this process uh, cooling will take uh, cooling uh, after this uh, process cooling will take place for the appropriate uh, uh, read for the appropriate reading and also appropriate process whereby 
one of this uh, concentrate evaporator and also concentrate will un undergo cooling. Okay. And then there will be a vacuum process and then there will be a vacuum process and after that just about all, all about the readings on refractive indexes of these uh, liquids. I'll be presenting about the results of this experiment. As we know, the effect that we studied in this part of the experiment is the vacuum level, which is also equal to the pressure. The three different kind of pressure that we studied was the ATM pressure, which is also equals to 760 millimeter mercury, negative 200 millimeter mercury, and negative 400 millimeter mercury. The initial volume in the feed tank for the potassium permanganate was 650 ml, and the initial concentration was calculated using the refractive index and it showed the value of 1.33278. So, for this experiment, the values that we get, the concentration we actually calculated using the refractive index. So, for in the beginning of each experiment, we calculate the initial refractive index and then at the end of each pressure slot, we calculate the evaporate, concentrate and condensate refractive index. As we can see from the table that the concentration has negative value which I'll explain later why we have negative value for the concentration but we can also notice that for each uh, pressures as the pressure is reduced the time for the first bubble reduced that means the solution boils faster. So how do we get the concentration of a solution using a refractive index? Using a calibration curve. This is a calibration curve that was provided in the lab manual. It's a calibration curve specifically for potassium permanganate. So it's against potassium, potassium permanganate concentration against the refractive index. As we can see, we have this equation y equals to 20.837x minus 27.802. So what we do is, the refractive index value that we get, we substitute into the x to get the concentration. But there is one backlash of this calibration curve, it has a minimum value here. So the minimum value of this is 1.3343. So if you get a refractive index which is lesser than 1.3343, we will get a negative value. In this case, it happened to us in our experiment. We identify the problem, it's actually a problem with a refractometer or some measurement problem in the lab. So with our results that we got, we plotted this graph. It's a graph of time for first bubble against the pressure. As we notice, as the pressure decreased, 760 for ATM, minus 200 and minus 400, the time decreases, which means it's faster to boil. So My name is Roman. So I will proceed with the we will proceed with presenting the discussion. So first point that we came out from the experiment is that the boiling point of the solution is related to the pressure of the, the system. That means when we increase the pressure of this of the system, the boiling point of the solution tend to increase also. Sorry. We move on, on the sec on the second point, which is when the pressure decreases from the atmospheric to the negative 400 mmHg, the time for the first bubble to form and to boil also decreases. As we know that, the boiling point is that the temperature when the pressure of the vapor is equal to external pressure. That means when we increase the boiling, when we increase the the when we increase the boiling point, the time of water to boil also will be decreased. So. So, the next point is that when the pressure decreases, the concentration of evaporate increases. This is because the evaporation rate is increased. This causes the temperature, the temperature on the surface try to the temperature of the in the system increase and then this causes the the vapor pressure on the surface of the solution decrease as the pressure de pressure decrease the water molecule tend to move outside to move up and then this causes the 
concentration of the evaporate increase. Since the concentration of the evaporate increase, this causes the, concent the concentration of the concentrated and the condensate to decrease. Hello, my name is Hisham al Jariri, and I'll be talking about the errors that we met in our experiments, recommendations from our group to enhance the experiment, and eventually is the conclusion. First, we go to the errors that we met in the experiment. Parallax error, which is about uh, our height, uh, the height, how do we look at the height of the experiment? The eye contact should be perpendicular to the level of the fluid or anything we are going to observe. It's not easy to make this very accurate, so there's always a parallax error when it comes to our result. So the result is not accurate because of this first error. Second one is faultiness of equipment. The equipment that we got, which is the refractometer in the lab, didn't match accurately the uh, refractometric, uh, refractometric index in the lab manual. So, so some values, for example, for the KMNO4, which is the fluid that we use in our experiment, was not accurately matching the one in our experiment. So it must be enhanced by using like a new refractometer or something like that. The third one is inconsistency of pressure drop in the pump. The pump, uh, when we look at the pump, the values there is fluctuating all the time. So it was not getting accurate values for the results that we, that we made. So it's always better to use digital pump that will adjust itself and control the values. The fourth error is human error. Of course, we are not machines, so it's not easy to make like very accurate values for all the experiment when measuring for the evaporate, condensate, or concentrate. So the values were not accurate because of human errors and our values cannot be very accurate. So it's always better to get a video or something to control this one. Now let's see our recommendations that from our group to improve the results of this experiment. First one, make sure the positions of eyes are perpendicular to the scale. This one can be always by trend. Second one is repeating the experiment for several times and then get the average of our results. That will be more enhancing our uh, result. Third point is ensuring to get the initial value, uh, volume of the mixture before running the experiment. Before running the experiment, we always have to make sure that we know the volume, we know all the details that we have in the experiment so that we can get better result. Make sure all the valves are open or closed properly. We have so many valves in this experiment, as mentioned before by my friends, so it's always better to check the valves if it's properly open or closed so that we won't have any... There was only a fluctuation in the pressure, so and we're getting uh, perfect results. Now let's move to conclude our whole project. In conclusion, we use the clamping film evaporator to demonstrate the effect of evaporator pressure on the rate of evaporation. We manipulate on the pressure of evaporator so that we can always get different rate of evaporation and later we can get the result and study the effect of that one. As the vacuum level decreases, the time to boil and the time for the first bubble, which is the boiling point, also decreases. Why this decreases? It's because the pressure decreases, so it's easier for the molecule to get out of the fluid and the evaporation gets easier and decreases. The clamping film evaporator is used in many industries, as like juice production and many uh, other industries. Uh, it's used as its efficiency can be increased by manipulating different factors. As we manipulate more factors, we can get many many applications in industry so this is a very useful one and we just did a simple uh, demonstration for this climbing film evaporator thank you very much